Um, we didn't rebound, we didn't cut out, we didn't follow the things we needed to follow, so none of us did a good job and we found a way to lose a game. Um, there's no time to dwell on it. Um, we have to play maybe the hottest team in the league tomorrow. I think it's senior night there, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, so it'll be another uh, interesting game. Um, we have uh, we had a couple of good sessions yesterday. To be honest with you, we uh, talked a lot. I to get through stuff. Seems like I spend more time talking than I do practicing in the last two and a half weeks. But we got some experienced guys who've been through some things here, and you know we got to learn how to get off the mat one more time. Uh, in Nebraska, I said they were the hottest team. One four to five, and Nebraska has been playing the best basketball in probably Fred's era there. Being senior day, uh, they got some seniors that have been through a lot. It'll be a challenge for us on a special day for them. Uh, they had a couple injuries, and they've adjusted and come out on a stronger end. Uh, Tominga Tom Tominga has uh, been phenomenal. He's uh, making shots from all over. He's constant movement. The kid Walker is a very, very good player, one of the better big men in our league, just in a different way. He doesn't just score in the post. He he does stuff off the dribble. He scores that way a little bit more. And he leads him in assists at over four a game, which is a lot, especially for a center. Um, the other kid, the Gristle kid they have uh, at 6'7", pre presents some problems as a huge point guard, 6'7", well built. So they have three guys that could play anywhere. Uh, their role players are also been very good. Um, so uh, I'd say in general, um, we get a chance to see if we can get off the mat against a quality team uh, that we beat early in the year, but it's a completely different team, not only because they're missing two guys that were there, but they added two uh, offensive guys and they're much better offensively. And, and uh, you know, it's interesting because Sam, um, Fred's son has been playing and uh, he's just done a phenomenal job for him. It's amazing. There was times we were talking about helping him get to a Division II school and he's become not only a player, but a key player and uh, credit goes to him. So questions, I'll take them. Over the last three games, you guys uptick the scoring uh, and gotten a little more offense consistency. The shooting's been there for since that Rutgers game. What's changed maybe on the offensive side to allow that? Is it just the health factor for some of those guys? Well, you know, it does help. Malik has had some couple of good games in the middle and then playing together, practicing a little bit more together, I think has been a factor. Tyson's been on a rampage. AJ has done a very good job of even not taking as many shots, but getting more people involved, getting downhill a little bit more, getting some openings there. Joey, Joey and, and Tyson have been on a pretty good five, six, seven, eight game stretch. But uh, I'd say that the ball movement has been better. Break's been a little better, not what I'd like it to be. And uh, we're getting guys clean shots. And uh, we got enough shooters if we get them clean shots. Now, you know, what sometimes happens, then your offense improves and your defense kind of, and I wouldn't say our defense has gone to hell, but I wouldn't say it's where it was. And uh, so we had some time we spent yesterday both on our offense and our defense, but our defense from the standpoint of finishing the job by rebounding the ball. And I think that's ball movement, penetration, and very unselfish play has been, uh, I think, one of the factors. It would be a difficult film watch yesterday when you talk about bouncing off the bat. How big of a challenge is that now, given the nature of that game? Not for you, but for your player. Yeah, I didn't watch one second of film on, a, on that game yesterday, to be honest with you. I watched a little bit on the plane with a couple guys and uh, pointed out some things. And uh, that's the, the advantage, disadvantage of one or two day preps. You know, you, you got to practice yesterday, you got to move on, especially for a team we haven't played since the beginning of the year. It's almost like a new prep because they got new players. Um, they played differently than they played early. Um, we talked. We, we had a meeting to talk about. And I said, you know, I'm not going to show you. If time comes, you know, start trusting what we say, 
and this is a waste of time anyway. So, um, you know, very disappointing because it's probably as good as we played since Cassius has been here. And uh, in a lot of ways, too, even defensively, against a very good offensive team. But um, not finishing it, um, you know, as I said, coach has to take responsibility when you have a 12, 13 point lead with a minute and a half left. And I did. And uh, so I worked on the things I thought we did, free throw cutouts or some, uh, a press breaker a little bit, uh, some other things that we worked on. But uh, we didn't watch one second of film on Michigan State and Iowa. So um, I kept the stress meter down a little bit. Tyson's ability to create his own shot seems like he's taken another level. How much better has he gotten over the last four or five weeks? Well, Ty came in yesterday uh, just to sit down and talk with me before practice started the, the second time we got together yesterday. And, uh, and he says, I feel like I've gotten so much better in so many different ways since I came. And that was kind of a, a much needed statement from a player to a coach instead of always it being from a coach to a player. I think he has improved in a lot of areas. Uh, you know, his toughness, he's a tough kid. He's playing a lot of minutes um, defensively. He's always been good. Now he's putting the two together where we put him on the best player and yet we try to get him shots and shot clock. We have a guy now we can go to that and get a shot, as you say. Um, I just think he's improved enormously in, uh, in a year, year and a half, I guess, and uh, couldn't come at a better time. And, and he's been so much fun to coach. I mean, he's, he just doesn't make many mistakes. And when he does, he takes blame and we move on. You're talking about guys on Saturday at the end looking like they were kind of in quicksand. And I know you were happy with the rotation before that. Have you seen kind of coach look at how, why that ended up happening? Why we looked like we were in quicksand at yeah. the end? Uh, you know, I, I don't, you know, Joey might have been a little fatigued, but I, I, I thought other than that, um, you know, we made a couple plays, guys. Uh, they were mental mistakes more than physical mistakes. You know, we weren't supposed to double down. We weren't giving up a two. We were we were letting them get a two to, to get a three, and three times we we made some mistakes there, and uh, that's just the way it went. So I, I don't know. Maybe maybe you know. I'm sure it's been grindy, grueling uh, physically. It's been grueling mentally the last couple of weeks. But I don't think that had anything to do with the fact that um, just kind of lost our minds there for a, a stretch. And, and if you watch the film, which I did on the plane, they hit three of the five were hellacious threes, you know. Uh, they hadn't done anything before that. And uh, so uh, it's, it happens. It, it happens. It's, it's uh, unexcusable. It's... It's frustrating. I'm sure it's frustrating for our fans. But uh, if we play as good as we played against Iowa uh, and we correct the last minute and a half, uh, this team's going to do what I said they're going to do and we'll make a run. And I'm wondering, seeing that game with the others around the league this weekend, home court obviously is in such a factor. I mean, you feel like it's maybe more this year than others and maybe have any ideas why? Yeah, because I think people are mentally softer than they used to be, and I really do. Um, you know, I look back, though, and one thing I showed my team yesterday morning when we had a little meeting was, you know, you know, we had that stretch. We came back from Portland, and, and that still had a lot of damage to do. So there's nobody that deserves more blame for that than the head coach and his schedule. But we came back that Notre Dame game, and then three days later, you know, we played Northwestern, and and I'm watching the film, and I, I went back, what are we doing at the end? And I'm watching the film in Northwestern, and with, a, with 28 seconds or 30 seconds left, we're down one, and Boo Booey makes an unbelievable dipsy do shot. Um, you know, game I think we could have won. And then uh, Purdue was a week later, and we led until the last three seconds. We are up five with two minutes left. And, uh, and I think we should have won that game. Be honest with you. And then the other game, yeah, I think I could play the same scenario 9,999 times to one, and I think we win it. You ever think if we won those three games, you know, you look at analytics, you look at um, 
the net, you look at all this stuff. If you win those three games, we're in first place. Now you can say, well, there's probably games you could have lost. I don't think so. You know, I think that we're that close. And uh, somehow I'm going to live with that. Now, at the end of the year, some years, you, uh, you never get there. But that close, that close. And uh, instead of eight losses in the league, we got five. And Northwestern and Purdue each have another one. That's how close and delicate it is. And so I try to sell that to my team to say, hey, you know what? Don't listen to Twitter. Don't listen to people. Don't listen to this. Listen to that. Look in the mirror and see what you did wrong. Let's fix it because we're not that far off. I think we're even closer when I looked at that myself. I showed them the film of those last seconds. I guess that's the only film I showed on the big screen when we were practicing. This is what we did in those three games. That would be the difference. Um, that's... That's pretty awesome considering the injuries we've been through and the situation we've been in. So a guy that usually looks at the cup half empty, uh, looked at it half full yesterday, liked what I saw. Whether we do something about it, we'll find out. Talk one or two more. Roger. It's hard to believe this is the last week of the regular season. It is. Well, what would you like to see in these last two games that you feel would set you up to make a run as you'd like to do yeah. in March? I'd like to see two wins. Um, you know, that's for sure. I'd like to see us get back to guarding and running the offense that I think we can. I'd like to see Malik keep taking strides forward. And, and uh, I, I'd like, I looked at the last five games. We have a five-game stat. In those five games, we're shooting 48-7. We're shooting 38 or 9 from the three. We're shooting 87 from the free throw line. We're not rebounding quite as good. Our turnovers are down to 10 and a half. Not bad. Um, a lot of good things. The problem is it's a damn good league. People aren't used to this. Like, nobody would be used to going to – a couple coaches in the league called me and said, good luck. I mean, they're playing good, and, and those of you who have ever been there, it's maybe as crazy a crowd as you could get for a team that's been not very good over the years. Uh, that crowd has been unbelievable every year. So I'd like to see us rebound a little better. I'd like to see us take care of the ball, you know, a little bit more consistency. We've had some really good games, seven, eight turnovers. We've had a 13 and a 15. And uh, I'd like us to get back to, uh, to maybe defending for 40 minutes instead of 38. Now, the shot at Michigan, um, I'm not sure you could have defended much better than Tyson. He just made a shot. You know, a couple of shots there, he made a shot. Uh, that's going to happen, and uh, and uh, you put on your big boy pants and realize it's going to happen. But at the same time, I really look at this team. I don't think we're the best, the most talented team I had. I don't think the best team we had. But we're that far from being playing for a championship, much less other things. And you know, some of those years, I mean, Purdue early, Nebraska had them in overtime. Ohio State had them. You know. Sometimes you win those games, that's how you win a championship. Sometimes you lose them, that's how you don't win a championship. But whether the team's good enough, and this analytic BS that I see all the time, that because a hook shot went in at the end, you're uh, 60 on the net, if it goes in, you're a 20 on the net. Uh, you know, I struggle with that. So, and that's what goes around, and that's what permeates these kids' heads. So yesterday I did my own little, uh, uh, my own little analyzing and my own little bracketology and my own little uh, conference stats. And I came up with uh, this team has been damn good. We lost one game where we got our butts blown out. That was at Purdue. Other than that, we've been right in every game um, with a lot of things that we've had to go through with injuries and that. And uh, I feel the same way I felt this summer. I felt this fall. I felt halfway through the year, and I told you two weeks ago. Um, we're good enough to play anybody in the league, anybody maybe in the country. And, uh, and yet we proved where we don't have a great margin for error. Mistakes for us get compounded because we don't have dominant talent maybe. We gotta live with that. We gotta coach better and play a little better and uh, then we'll make one of those patented runs that we're used to around here. Tom, I apologize if you covered this in Iowa, but I assume this week is what it is in terms of the Minnesota game, or is that still a 
Awesome. Yeah, you know, I thought it was already going to be released, so I will release it. I thought I already did once, but the Big Ten office, I think, said they were going to do it something out too. today. You know, I've been disappointed in the way it's been handled at the Big Ten office, but I would like to publicly state because I, I saw, I didn't see it because I, I wouldn't look at that crap on that um, social media stuff. But my assistants were Steve. Uh, uh, Pico was getting some, you know, I don't think they did a good job with anybody. Uh, the, you know, Pico had a play last night at 6.30. One of the things was to move that game up. There was not a lot of options. So do not blame him. Um, maybe I blame the Big Ten office on what I got. I did not think that it was very aggressively handled early. And as I look back, it might have been one of those things because of TV, because of all the stuff. There's just nothing that could be done. It's too bad. Um, I know this. I know uh, Ben wanted to do everything he could do to play. And uh, I do think Steve would have helped in any way he could. It just didn't work out. So a couple of years ago, it didn't work out for us because we played all the games this year. It didn't work out because we didn't play. But uh, just another, just another good thorn in my side to motivate me to uh, to work harder. So it just won't be played? Won't be played. This might be for the Big Ten then, but how will that affect uh, the standings and the double? Is that all? Okay. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> uh, let the Big Ten office, they seem to be good at handling things, let them handle this because I have no idea what that does to, uh, you know, I mean, it used to be the first, you know, tiebreaker was... Uh, competition against each other. Then it was whether you, uh, uh, who you played in the top. If somebody beat Purdue and you didn't, okay. they got something over you. Now, because of the number of games, or won't be even, we'll be the only team that didn't play Minnesota. Not once, but most played them twice. We'll be the only team that didn't play the full amount of games, us and Minnesota. And uh, so then I guess it goes by percentage. But um, you know what? If we would have won Saturday, we could have helped ourselves. So I don't blame anybody on that. I'm just disappointed that it wasn't, there weren't more options available. But maybe there wasn't able to be. So maybe it's nobody's fault, just bad luck for Michigan State and Minnesota. And we move forward. It's, uh, it's you know, it is what it is. And uh, that's the way it works. Is that a point of pride for you the last two years playing all 20? Yeah, that's why I did it that year when we were dead and got my backside kicked. Getting really proper for TV now. So I got my the other side of me kicked three games in a row. But it is pride for me. I, you know what? I love Michigan State, but I love this conference second on the list. And, and I think, you know, you, you try to do what you can do. But... I think people tried to do it. Maybe the Big Ten office tried to do it. Just didn't feel like there was the communication that needed to be. And and uh, that's a little disappointing, but maybe it's nobody's fault because of the way everything happened. Nobody's fault at all. Anything else, guys? So I finally made an announcement that they were supposed to make one. They're making it tonight. I mean, it's... I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know when. it's uh, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I gotta go to a few of them, guys.